But no, so you definitely want something that can connect to the computer to be able to read these type of microphones. Uh, after that, what I will probably recommend next is getting a good pair of headphones. Uh, it's always best to listen to yourself the way you sound, especially when it comes in headphones, because as your community listens to your show, they're going to be listening to you most likely with their Bluetooth headphones on or in a car. So you want to make sure that you have great mic placements, which is why I advise a lot of our clients here to have headphones on while you're recording. That way, sometimes you get too distraught, you turn your head, you can hear yourself fading in and out in your head to recorrect. Also, even if you don't plan on wanting to go that far, if you plan on editing your show, which most people just now starting out want to figure out everything, you definitely want to be able to hear what you sound like on some good quality headphones. Audio-Technica make a great version of a headphone called, I believe, the V20. Uh, yeah, the AVC20, which is literally like 30 bucks on Amazon right now. They fit very comfortably. Uh, that's all the headphones that I had probably about in 2020. I purchased those. I uh, loved them. I use those when I'm at home doing a lot of my editing. Uh, and then that brings me to my fifth thing, which is a completely underrated, crucial, essential device, a timer. You need something to detect your time, whether it be your phone, whether it be your watch, whether it be the computer that you're recording on, you need to know what time you're talking in because the last thing you want to do is get up caught up in a crazy conversation you thought was great it lasts for two whole hours and now you have to a either spend extra money to have someone else edit all this two hours down or you have to sit there and realize you did a lot of rambling to re-edit this two hours down or if you had a plan on doing a 15 minute solo show and you're not watching the time and you think you did good and you look up you only did seven minutes of it Stopwatch is so critical to podcasting and even trying to take your levels to a professional level. If you've been, ever been on a production set, they have huge timers constantly going off, alerting everybody what time it is, how many minutes of recording has been. Even while me and Quincy are doing this now, we are watching for every 10 minute frame that clicks on because that's a cue. And that's so important is time management. All right. Thank you, Buck, for that. And, and can you recap those things for me, one through five? Of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. First thing you need is something to record on, whether it be your phone, computer, laptop, or even a Zoom little personal recorder, a mini recorder, a handheld recorder, there we go. Second, you need some type of microphone. If you're using your phone or one of those Zoom audios, most of them come with microphones. If not, you need to look at it, get in a microphone, which is still under a hundred bucks. You can get a really good USB microphone for under a hundred dollars. Uh, next is you need, if you don't plan on recording from your phone, you need a desktop or a laptop, you need a microphone that's going to be able to communicate with that. That's where our audio interface, or if you have a microphone that has a USB port, there you go. Uh, fourth thing that you need is a headphones, because you want something to be able to hear yourself. And even when you're editing your show, you want to be able to fully hear it, not just on loudspeakers, but on some headphones. And the fifth thing, like I said, the top underrated thing is your timer. You want to be able to gauge how long you're talking for, where's your cues at, especially if you're having guests as your uh, or interviews or guest people. You want to be respectful of their time as well. So you don't want to tell them that you're going to have an hour long interview and you're looking up it's two hours now. Whether they say they're cool with it or not, you just want to always respect people's time. So those are my sound recap. Sounds good. Now, tell me a, about a few other things. Um, one, starting with lighting. You, we talked about that uh, prior to recording. Uh, and I know lighting, you think of it just in terms of video recording and not necessarily podcasting. Um, but talk, talk to me a little bit about uh, lighting and why you would recommend that as well. And Quince, I'm glad you brought that up because lighting is important, uh, especially if you're doing conference calls or if you're interviewing someone that you do not have the pleasure of interviewing them right next to you. And with it being still we're in 2021, uh, you know, COVID and different, the world pandemic is still uh, an issue. You have some people that just do not feel comfortable or that might not even be the same state that you're in. You still want to have a good conversation with them. If all the lights are off and you're sitting there on the screen looking at someone who is uh, you're supposed to try to have a professional conversation with, it's, it's going to feel awkward. I mean, you always want to make your guests feel comfortable uh, and special. That's what I call special guests. Good lighting, a nice even ring light that you can buy at Walmart will be decent enough beyond just you just having a weird light sitting above you, sitting in the kitchen. Uh, take that time out to make that investment. 
have a light shine nice directly lighting up your whole profile face uh, just to be able to give that great presentation to the person that you're talking to they're taking out their time of day to be able to join you on your show you should at least have the common courtesy to be able to make sure they're not seeing a grim reaper looking face but they see your beautiful face while you're talking to them which also brings me to the cameras as well now you do not need to expend a lot of money on cameras when it comes to podcasting at all that's not don't think that's what we're trying to say here but you want to have a decent camera whether it be your phone selfie camera if you're doing a zoom conference conference call or if you have a laptop camera or if you want to buy a logitech camera that's under 100 dollars, you can get them for like 69 dollars, i believe uh you can mount those perfectly on top of your computer it's going to give you a nice clean look and with that lighting behind it you're going to look like a professional all right thank you for that and so uh, a few more things uh and these were things again that we had discussions about uh, again, particularly with podcasting, s your sound quality is important. Um, the microphone is a, a big a reason why um, your, the sound uh, will, again, essentially uh, create, create the best quality of sound with the best quality of microphone. But you also talked about uh, actually soundproof in the room. Can you go into that as well? Of course. So whenever you're going to start to talk, you start hearing. If you're walking to a, loud, a gym by yourself and just start talking or dribbling a ball, you hear a loud echo going on. That's the worst thing you want to hear when it comes to podcasting. You don't want to listen to a show that sounds like he's or her outside just screaming. You just hear nothing but echoing. The best way to fix that is with you know, sound deafening. You can see the ones that I got behind me. Uh, these are custom made, but you can just buy them. Uh, in a panel with like egg crate shells, different colors uh, to customize your theme that you have going for yourself. But if you're on a budget, and let's say you don't have the money to drop in those, you can even just use quilts. Quilts do a great job of killing that sound wave that's coming out of your voice and hitting the wall and bouncing back. And the issue why that could be even a bigger issue dealing with microphones because that same sound wave can come crashing back into your mic where it can sound really bad. And as a podcaster or a content creator, you want to make sure you're giving your community the top, best quality that you can possibly do it. Now, I have another room inside the studio right across the hallway where if I were going there and have the same conversation and face, I believe, the east wall, you'd be able to hear a lot of my reverb back. That's what's called the echo. It's called reverbing. You'd be able to hear a lot of that back. Luckily, with this room slightly sound treated, you don't hear almost anything back. But at the same time, it doesn't sound too still. Because uh, that's also another issue you can run with. And I think as a podcaster, at least from my ears, uh, I enjoy a natural sound with a, like a slight hint of reverb, but not too much. So that's what this room is treated for. So last question on, on soundproof. And is it, is it necessary to cover every space in of your room or wherever you're going to be recording with soundproofing? Like every the back of every door? back of every, I mean, all the walls, the ceiling, or what, what would be your guidelines for how much would you need to, how do you know that your your room is, is soundproofed effectively? Best way is to trial and error. Test it out. You know, if you know you're talking in a certain direction, you have to look, you have to think about it too. If, if a sound wave, if I'm, if I throw in a picture, your sound wave is coming out of your mouth and hitting the wall right behind. So my sound wave is simply hitting the camera and I'm going to the wall behind it. Then it's going to bounce back towards me. You know, my sound wave is traveling through the camera, hitting partial of the camera, bouncing off that wall, and even coming back towards me. And even slightly, if I'm talking loud enough, bouncing off this wall and coming back into my microphone. Uh, so you want to just test it out. Uh, I know if you're recording in a closet, which is a great spot to start at because it's kind of enclosed already, the walls are enclosed as well. You know, you can easily test those walls. You know, throw a blanket in front of you. Throw two blankets on the side of you. If you're able to record in a bigger room, test it out. Record, throw some sound paneling right behind you. Always want to throw it in the direction that you're talking in, of course, and roughly in the direction behind you, depending on how much space it is there behind you. I know this is a 10 by 10, 10 by 11 room that we're recording in right now, and I have everything but the ceiling treated in this room. A, because most people in here aren't talking too loud, uh, and B, people sit across from this whole table. So that's why I got all walls and doors covered up.